at FICO, you know, we, we create a lot of patents and a lot of, of you know, new algorithms, right? And it's, it's primarily to stay ahead of the bad guys, right? And we, we evolve that over time, and it's a big part of our, our, our legacy and, and, and really important, right, as we see this evolution of adoption of AI. And for us, you know, we, we, we have to explain our models, so we spend a lot of time on this concept of explainable AI, right, where we can talk about how, what drives models. What's your thoughts about you know the current you know explainable AI and, and these sort of topics like GDPR where that's the uh, that's the most important and, and uh, interesting question and I think it's hard to answer right now but you're right explainable AI it's my main issue because we are moving into this new generation of computers that will be literally black boxes uh, going back to the blue if um, you had enough time and patience. You know, spending uh, I don't know, weeks and looking at the uh, miles and miles of, of logs, yep. you could go back to the original intention, why this move or not, uh, not, not that move was made. Yep. Today we are looking at the computers, we can talk for instance about uh, AlphaZero, the DeepMind project, mm -hmm. where even their creators, they're not aware why one version is playing better than another one. Yeah. And uh, that's a problem for regulators, that's a problem also for scientists, and that's a problem for business. Because in many cases you might be facing uh, questions that, uh, that you, you cannot answer. And um, I'm afraid it's a package that we have to buy. Uh, it's, I don't think that with, with a further development of these deep learning programs, mm -hmm. we'll be able to control the, the, um, uh, the square one. Yeah. So this is how, how and why the certain uh, uh, process started. Though we have to recognize that uh, uh, this uncertainty could um, cause some, uh, some discomfort because certain decisions might be, uh, might be based on very funny, funny uh, assessments. I mean, for instance, I, I, I was thinking about the situation that uh, you download the data uh, to your new super powerful computer, yep. from thousand cars. Yep. Same model, same year of production, different colors. For some reasons that no one can explain, of course, the red cars perform better than the cars of other cars. Mm -hmm. yep. Now for us, you know, we understand, you know, this is, this is causation and correlation. That's, yep. it's, this, this fact means nothing. It just, you, 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 you will, you will uh, put z almost zero value, I mean, actually zero value. Mm -hmm. yeah. Machine, it could decide right. that the red paint makes cars run faster. Yeah. Now, in, 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 in calculating something else, in just uh, making predictions for something very remote from, from, this, from, from, from this car uh, yeah. uh, business, it may actually integrate this, the red paint uh, uh, assessment mm -hmm. into the, into the, the, the uh, decision-making tree right. and to come up with some crazy, crazy uh, solution. That's why I think it's very important for us to, to work on interface, yes. human-machine interface. It becomes even more important with these powerful machines and, uh, and that's the, those machines that will operate you know, f within the framework that we, we design for them. So the human role of, of uh, not even guiding them, I would use the word being a shepherd, mm -hmm. yep. because you have these air flocks, and you just have to make sure that they just they move in the right direction toward uh, the, the richer pasture of data. <laughs>